It's continuing coverage of Ball State football here on Ball State All Access and BallStateSports.com. We're out here at the CBC golf outing today, joined by uh, one of the greats of Ball State football history. Uh, and I can say that because punters are football players. This is a Rich Eisen thing. Punters are people too. Uh, Brad Maynard joins us. Uh, what's up, man? How you been doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. It's great to be here. What brings you back up? What out of uh, out of all of the years uh, in 2018, what made you come I back? I know. Finally, I could. I made it work. Um, it's tough with three kids. I'll, I got three kids in travel sports, travel baseball, travel cheerleading. Um, it just finally it worked out that I could get away for a weekend. It's nice to be back here in, in Muncie. What's it like being a normal guy now, not being a football player and kind of being able to play dad a little bit? My wife keeps that. asking me when I'm going to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to be when you grow up? Um, it's been great. I've been. That's one of the best parts is just I've been fortunate that I've been with my kids from and I think about coaches constantly I mean because my wife asks me all the time is coaching something you want to do and I do but I've been able to enjoy my kids while they're young I've coached them all throughout little leagues little league sports all the way through middle school um, so I've, I've been there and that's been nice uh, will they punt they are I just got off the phone with a with a punting coach. Um, they're trying to follow you need a my punting footsteps, coach? right? I, I'm like, where can you find a guy? <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes it's easier, it's easier to do it than teach it. Fair I enough. found for me. So, but yeah, they're, the boys are trying to follow my footsteps, and um, we're starting the recruiting process right now with my junior in high school, Connor. Um, and it's 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 exciting. I'm kind of seeing now what my parents went through, and it's exciting. What else are you up to uh, other than? Being a dad. Lots of golf. A, yeah. Should be ready for today. Um, um, working off and on for a couple of different companies in sales. Um, I use the term working loosely uh, because it's kind of on my time, and so that's nice as well. Again, I can be at home and spend time with my wife and kids. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the good stuff from back in the playing days a little bit. Um, when you first come into Ball State football and get associated with the program, Brad Maynard is one of the first names you learn about. Uh, and not the fact that you were just a great punter, but the fact that you were the defensive player of the year and the MVP as a punter. Uh, when you look back, I mean, you're a punter, so maybe the answer to this is not that much, but how crazy was that to you that, that people had that much respect for what you were able to do in that position? Yeah, it's a, like you said, it's a looking back. It, it, it's, people ask me all the time about, why didn't you go to a bigger school? Why weren't you at a Big Ten school or an SEC, you know, whatever it was. And number one, I wasn't recruited that heavily out of high school. But um, number two, I, I look back and like, I don't think things would have been the same. I don't think you're not going to win MAC MVP in the Big Ten as a punter, a defensive player of the year as a punter. So I feel like it was destined for me to be here and for things to work out the way they did. And um, I wouldn't, I tell people still, I wouldn't change a thing. You weren't recruited, um, and I read the story that talked about you being found. This is the—I feel like if this is 100% accurate, the craziest recruiting story of all time. Did Tex Ritter recruit recruit you, so to speak? Yeah, you know what? I was at a camp at Anderson in Anderson, at Anderson University, and Tex and Bill Reynolds, the kicking coach at the time, were at that camp. And and Tex, I told the story last night to the CBC group, and uh, I was hitting balls and having a great day. And they came up to me and said, "Hey, hey, kid, where are you going to school next year?" I said, school, what do you mean? He's like, You're, well, who's talking to you? I said, nobody. And I just remember looking back now, seeing the, the little mouse running in Texas head. Don't tell him I said that. Um, <laughs> and he, he and Bill look at each other like, are you kidding me? You know, and so anyway, that was kind of the start of the recruiting process. And the next thing we know, we get a call from Bill Lynch. And uh, my parents and I came over to, to see Bill. We sat in the, underneath the, in an office under the football stadium there, the old locker room. Um, and that's kind of where the details were worked out and didn't have a scholarship available but said we'd like to have you come walk on and um, thought it was a great opportunity with Damon Keller was their punter and he was going to be a fifth year senior. They had one other punter Steve Schulte on scholarship uh, but I just felt like it was, and Purdue offered same preferred walk on status and but they had scholarship to kid out of Florida um, that was my age so it just seemed like the best opportunity for us to have an opportunity to play. Tell me about the experience you got being at Ball State too, because I know you've said in other interviews also that, and you, this wasn't even something you got to do in the NFL, in that here you were able to, it was up to you where you were going to punt the ball. They, they gave you the, the leeway to understand the situation and, and, and grow that way. How much did that help you, uh, A, have success here, but B, also become the guy you became as a punter? Yeah, I'm so blessed to have Scott Pettel was our special, special teams coach, and he gave me that. I had the luxury of, you know, and it was kind of a, as long as you're not messing things up, 
I'll trust you and, and you call the shots. Tell me which way you want to go and what's gonna, which way the wind's going to help you punt. And I was fortunate that he understood that and trusted me enough to let me, to know that, A, and I've heard, you know, Bill Lynch has said it before, that I was a team player. You know, that I was going to do what was right and, and best for the team at the time. Um, did you ever mess it up? Like, what was the learning process like and the trial and error? Well, I wouldn't say I'd ever, I've never messed up from a, a strategy standpoint, but I miss hit balls. You know, of course, you're a punter, you're going to miss hit a ball here and there, especially playing in Muncie, Indiana, in the wind and the cold. And uh, so there were times when, you know, I, I know I, at home, one game I remember my, the 19 yard punt off the side of my foot, but. To me, that was a good. That was the good miss. If it was off the side, because that means I just barely missed it. If I was hitting it off the inside and it was curving, curving left, that was more trouble for me. But, but a couple times, you know. How did you study the science of what you did um, and the mechanics behind punting? A lot of people, I think, just assume it's the guy who comes in and kicks the ball. Um, you're a tactician with it, though. Uh, and how much did you kind of sit down and really go through? If I hit it this way, I'll spin it this way. I'll curl it this way. I'll place it here. How do you? Uh, this always I've marveled at, and Scott Cavanda was great at it when he was here a couple of years ago too, but you've got 45 yards to punt the ball and, until you get to the end zone. He would put it at the one yard line every time to know you're going to kick the thing 44 yards. Where's that feel come from? Practice. You know, I'm telling my kids that right now. It's, it doesn't happen overnight. This is, you know, you understand, I, I was hitting three, four hundred balls a day throughout high school in the summers. And same as I got to Ball State, I bet three to four days a week, it was 250 to 500 balls a day. You know, it's just like a golfer standing on the driving range for hours and hours and hours. You gotta, you gotta learn that feel. It doesn't come naturally. Anything you do, you gotta learn the feel. Um, Golf's probably a so good analogy for that too. Golf's a great analogy yeah. for it. And I use it all the time with, even with people ask, how do you hit it so far? Like, and what do you look for in a high school kid or a college kid? And it's leg speed. You know, what do they talk about in golf? Why, do, why does Freddie Couples hit it, Corey Pavin hit it further than some, some, some guy that's 6'5"? Club head speed. You know, they get through the ball, and it's timing, and all that's perfect. And punny's same, the same lever swing, it's all timing. Punters lift, too, by the way. You guys are in the weight room just as much. No? Really? I didn't touch a weight. I was throwing you a bone there. <laughs> no, I'm, I'll be honest. I didn't touch a weight, really, until... Well, I remember the first time I came here, and Wade Russell... <laughs> put me on a bench press and he said it was 225 and I went and I couldn't even get it off the bar and he goes go, go over there and it was 135 and I'm like I can barely get it off the bar I'm like what is this weightlifting stuff because um, I I've always felt like I trained my body through punting I got stronger through just repetition of punting and it gave me flexibility and it kept my leg speed when I went to the New York Giants they really said we're gonna lift we're gonna get you bigger stronger and that's my punting went downhill. My back started hurting. I was bigger. I wasn't as flexible. So for those four years there, I felt like my punting went downhill a little bit. And when I went to the uh, Chicago Bears, they said, what do you need? And I went, what do you mean? They said, well, what do you, how can you punt your best? I'm like, are you kidding? I, that was refreshing to me. Like, it felt like Ball State again. I said, well, I need to just work on leg speed and flexibility and punting. They said, all right, great. And I really didn't touch a weight much with the Chicago Bears then, and and that's I and I went from about 200 pounds with New York, back down to about 182, and I was just felt so much better, and I was my legs were freer, and I could swing the ball, swing my leg better. What's punting in the NFL like? Because in those specialist jobs, um, I feel like there is such a small margin for error where you've got to be on every time. A, you impact the game only in small spurts when you're out there, and B, when you make a mistake, it's seen so much. How do you stick around for so long doing what you did? Consistency. It, you, I mean, that's all it is, period. And I, I think, to this day, the best compliment I ever got from a coach was Dave Tobe in Chicago. Said to me one day, he said, Brad, what I love about you, I've never seen you hit two bad balls in a row. You know, and that, and again, how do I build a consistency? Just 300 balls a day, all through college. 300 balls a day in the off season. Just consistently, constantly working on the craft. Tell me about the Super Bowl. What's it like to get there? Super Bowl's great. That's so fun. <laughs> I just wish we would have won one. Um, I guess, you know, it's, it's the pinnacle of our sport. It's what everybody, that's why we play. Um, some people think we play for the money, and that's great and all, but, but when, you're, when you're really there, you're playing to get to the Super Bowl. And, and first, it's to get to the playoffs. 
I mean, I know, I know guys that played 10, 12 years and never got in a playoff, never played in a playoff game. To never feel, to me, that's the NFL, because it changes. You talk about errors and things that stand out. Something, a, a mishit, mishitted punt, for example, in a regular season game, people forget about. If it happens in a playoff game, it's never forgotten. You know, and that's special. I mean, that's that's kind of what drives you and motivates you the most, though, is just the, that pressure of, and that's something you ask what I'm doing today, and it's so hard to find something that brings back that, that can emulate that pressure. And it's it's kind of tough to, to find something that I love that much and, you know, I wish I could still punt, but well, those days why, are done. I feel like that's why athletes <laughs> hang on as long as they possibly can, too. It's, tell, it's not because they love what they do in some respects, but you can't replicate that feeling. You can't replicate feeling. it at all. And I tell, I was talking to a punter the other day who's in his 14th or 15th year, and, and, uh, and he was talking about, ah, I'm going to give it another year or two, and I'm going to just hang it up. And I said, be careful saying, I said, make them kick you out. Because I'm telling you, when it's gone and when it's done and you can't go back, you're gonna miss it. I know it's hard now because he's got young kids like I did, and you start thinking about your family and being around for your kids. And but when it's done, it's done. So, what's Ball State mean to you in hindsight, looking back at it, um, and the legacy that a lot of people trace back to you as well in terms of the the punter you and and what kicking means at this school you now. You just gave me goosebumps. I mean that <laughs> that was the coolest thing to me that Reggie Hodges followed me, and then Scott Cavanda was obviously really good. Um, you Chris can, Miller. Chris Miller. Chris was great, and a couple of those guys. I'm surprised they didn't get an opportunity or a, a better look, you know. Um, but yeah, it's funny. Even around the country, people will occasionally I'll run into somebody and they'll say, "Punter, you." It's pretty cool. It's a neat. It's a neat thing. The All-American trip that you had too. Um, there are so many All-Americans that are part of that punter. You uh, was that a neat aspect of all this? Because who would think that here's this guy from Sheridan, Indiana, goes to Ball State University to be a punter, and you're in. That you was, guys did the Bob Hope show. You're Bob in Hope Vegas. Show. That was probably like, one of the best. Just meeting Bob Hope, and my parents still have a blown-up picture of of Bob Hope here, Ahmad Rashad here, because Ahmad was the host. I don't know if he's still if they're doing anything like that with Ahmad anymore, but. And I kind of just leaned down in between them, put my hand on both their shoulders, and you know those memories are the best, you know. And then the Walter Camp, um, Walter Camp has a foundation in Connecticut, and we went out for that. And Lynn Swan was there as one of the kind of guest speakers, or or whatever it was. And, and I'm flying back, standing in the airport, and I just happened to be on um, Lynn Swan's flight. And we're going back. I, think, I had to lay over in Pittsburgh is what it was. So he was going back to Pittsburgh. And uh, he's standing up at the counter, and he kind of turns around in motions and goes like this. And I stand in there, of course, and I'm going, what's he? And he's point talking to me, and he pulls him. He, he puts me into first class with him. I, so I fly back in first class. This was after my senior year, so this was all legal, um, I think. Pat Quinn just and, had a heart uh, attack, yeah. Right. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> it was definitely after my senior year. Um, but I flew back with Len Swan in first class, and that was one of the coolest things I ever got experienced. And as we're flying to Pittsburgh, he's pointing out his house to me, and just it was so cool. But just the opportunity to meet people like that, and Chris Fowler was the MC for that, and he was he was young in his career at that point, and uh, just met a lot of really interesting people and big name people. You know, it was just really neat. I just like that Len Swan can point out his house from an airplane, from an airplane while yeah. flying we over all Pittsburgh. Can, though, right? yeah, we all know, right? Within it. some sort of degree of error. <laughs> Um, obviously, you stay in touch with Ball State. Um, how much do you stay in touch with Ball State football now that uh, one of your teammates is in charge that's of it all? Awesome. I love it. I love that we brought back one of our own. And to me, that's you're bringing back somebody that it's not a job to him, I don't think. Um, he cares about the program. He played in the program. And um, he genuinely cares about Ball State football. Now we've had, we've had Bill Lynch, you know, Paul Shadell number of coaches that genuinely care about Ball State football, obviously, I'm not saying that, but I'm excited for Mike and the opportunity he has and to bring Keith McKenzie back on his staff that I played with and the two Lynch boys that are here. I was say, does it make you feel old? Because I heard the story you told at the Mac Hall of Fame that Kevin Lynch used to run around with you guys at practice uh, while you were working out. <laughs> yeah, I told that story last night to some folks, too. Um, is, is that crazy that Kevin Lynch oh is now gosh. coaching you? It is crazy. Um, I, we were doing the math. I was here in February, and I stopped by the football office, and we were talking about that. And I think we think he was 12, my senior year, you know, just running around and not a care in the world. And now he's running backs coach. It's pretty exciting. Give me a story on Mike New before I let you go. Um, Gosh, 
I wish I had a story. I'm like, darn it. <laughs> Maybe I'll get one after today. Um, Mike was obviously an exceptional quarterback and um, a leader, and, and you know, with his size, was such a presence. Um, I think that's what I remember the most when I first came here. Just remember going, wow, that's like that's a quarterback. That's what a quarterback's supposed to look like, you know. I mean, we can, I'm, my high school, our quarterback was five eight, you know. So, and we ran kind of the the option, and uh, that was kind of my first experience. But Mike was, I believe, a junior. I think I played two years with Mike. Yeah, I know I did because our senior year, his senior year, we won the, the conference. So. Um, so I don't have any good stories outside of football, darn it. He was fiery though, then. Like the fire you see now as a head coach, I feel like that was like volume turned up to 10 probably back as a player. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, I would have said Mike was a calm. I could see that too. Cute, calm, cool as a cucumber, you know, as a quarterback, I think. I think when, <laughs> when, you're, when you come the head coach, you know, it's everything's on your shoulders. I remember Bill Lynch used to just get beat red. He wouldn't yell much at us as players. He, I remember him yelling at refs a couple times. But man, when he's, all he had to do was not breathe for a few seconds. His face got so red and you just knew, all right, shape up. <laughs> what do those guys mean to you? We'll end on that note. Um, Love them. Bill Lynch, Paul Shudell, the impact they made on your life. Again, didn't understand it back then. But those, those men really cared about us as players. And I remember every, every year at the end of the year, Paul Shadal had the exit meetings, you know, um, with every individual player. And it was always, his first question was always, how are your grades? How's school going? You know, and then, or, or how's your family? Um, so that's what I remember the most. It wasn't always about football, uh, but it was more about us as people. Brad, appreciate the time. Uh, thanks for sitting down. Thank uh, you. Welcome back to Muncie again. And uh, appreciate it. hit him thanks straight, hit him far. It'll be fun. Brad Maynard joining us here on Ball State All Access. Uh, best punter in Ball State history, and because punters are people too, uh, maybe one of the best football players in Ball State history as well.